Tonight on News 13. Vandals strike again at this auto repair shop in Hazleton, but this time the owner of the shop says he has some evidence that could help the police find the suspects. I'll have that story. Schuylkill County is spending $16 million to upgrade its communication system. How local police are responding, coming up. Managing diabetes is a full-time job. I'll show you how one school is learning how to do that, coming up. This is News 13 Now. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to News 13 Now. I'm Kathy Bazinski. Well, a local garage owner wanted to do was support the Hazleton Police Department, but when he announced he was having a fundraiser, his business was vandalized. And after he held it, the building was vandalized again. Now he's hoping you can help identify the culprit. Christina Papa joins us now live in the studio to explain. Christina? That's right, Kathy. Video evidence could help clear things up for business owner Tim Malore, who says his store and property was the target of a vandalism spree that could cost him thousands of dollars to repair and clean up. They did it again. For the second time in just a few days, vandals marred the garage door on Tim's auto repair shop in Hazleton. A lot of damage. Monday morning we come in, there was uh, paint or uh, stain removal all over the, the garage doors. Last Thursday, someone spray painted graffiti on the door. Tim painted over it, then just days later, someone spray painted it again. I just out to make an honest living. It's my li livelihood. Tim says this all started when he announced he was holding a car wash over the weekend to raise money to support the HPD. When he advertised the fundraiser in the newspaper, vandals struck that same night. It hit the newspapers and the news. Saturday morning, the truck was vandalized with paint removal. The vandals defaced his truck, too. We're only out to try to help the community, and this is what I get back in return. This picture shows the damage done to his vehicle. And you can see the damages still today right up here. This yellow part of the front of the tow truck should actually be red. It's what happened when that paint removal was splashed onto the tow truck. Now Tim says he has some evidence that could help the police find the suspect who did this to his vehicle. This is a picture of the suspected vandal who defaced the truck. It was taken from the video surveillance cameras on the property where his tow truck was parked. Tim says he's caught the suspect red-handed. Yeah, I have a picture on camera of somebody. We just got to get the face cleared up a little more to identify him more, which we have somebody working on that now. While he doesn't know if he was targeted because he supports HPD or he's just being bullied, Tim says these incidences won't stop him from helping the community. I'm not really upset. I mean, I still continue to, to help the Hazleton PD out. It is what it is. We'll get down to the bottom of it. Tim says he wouldn't be surprised if his property was damaged a third time, but again, the acts of destruction won't prevent him from running his business and supporting Hazleton's police department. At least they have the steal of that suspect. Something to work on. Thanks a lot, Christina. Well, a series of accidents this morning when a man lost control of his car in Pottsville and hit some cars and then a school bus. Police say the man apparently suffered a medical issue in his car while in the parking lot of the A-plus convenience store at Route 61 and Norwegian Street in Pottsville. Lost control of the vehicle, which struck two cars in the parking lot. The car continued on to Norwegian Street, where it struck three parked cars, then rolled through the intersection of North George Street, where it slammed into the back of a school bus. There were some students on board, but fortunately none of them were injured. Police haven't released the name or condition of the driver who became ill. Well, Schuylkill County is spending millions of dollars to upgrade its communications network. It's going to really help when residents are faced with an emergency. As Matthew Petrillo tells us, it's only a few weeks away from completion. Schuylkill County is spending $16 million to upgrade its public safety communications. It's a project that's long due and one that's almost completed. Arrow bounding is something that was mandated by the federal government and uh, we have uh, invested about $16 million into this effort. Uh, last year we did a, uh, a bond issue. He says the $21 million bond issued by the commissioners in October 2012 is paying for the project. The county prison is getting a new time clock system with a facial recognition function. Gerard Vilboro bid five properties on West Main Street that were destroyed in a fire in February 2011. But not everything was approved. The Coaldale Volunteer Fire Company wanted to upgrade their heating system, and McAdoo wanted to start a stormwater project on Hancock Street. But the bids came in higher than expected. We're very excited about it. Uh, we're working with our local municipalities to uh, try to educate each and every one of them as to what 
the impact will be and the better communications that this will bring to uh, all of our municipalities. County officials are also adding an updated blight and nuclear power plant failure plan to a list of high-risk disasters for Schuylkill County. This is certainly a long process and uh, you know it doesn't happen overnight and uh, our uh, 911 director uh, Scott Crater continues to give us updates and uh, uh, I think we're moving as, uh, as fast as we can. Now FEMA has to approve the plan as well as each municipality in the county, but the commissioners say they expect it to pass. Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Pottsville. Some students from the local job corps spent the day at a special program to learn all about a career choice that's all about helping other people. The Keystone Job Corps Center held a career fair which focused on nursing. It's a way of presenting the students with different options once they're ready to enter the workforce. The job Corps is a residential program for people ages 16 to 24 to improve their quality of life through career, technical and academic training. Many general job related topics were also covered today including dressing for interview success, proper resume format and how to get the job done. Having people in the community come take the time out of their jobs, care enough to come and talk with the students, reinforces that and hopefully gives them a little bit of a leg up when they're looking for jobs later on. Knowing that I've tried to look for jobs without this information, it is a lot harder. Um, it's not really clear what you should put on your resume. It's not clear how you should go present yourself. And this really helps, especially for people that are serious about wanting to go out in the work field, wanting to present themselves properly, trying to get the jobs, because it's harder to get jobs nowadays. And students had the opportunity to speak with a number of people who work in the medical field and listen to the advice that they had to offer. Well, November is National Diabetes Awareness Month, and the nursing students at the Schuylkill Technology Center are learning how to manage the condition. As Samantha Galvez tells us, they actually use simulators, which make it like they were talking to real patients. Well, my grandmother had diabetes, but I was young, and she, I didn't really know much about it. We all know someone who had or has diabetes, but generally speaking, it's one of those diseases whose day-to-day -day management is overlooked. I don't think they realize that sugar is like a big part of your body. I mean, it can affect how you think, how you act, your um, emotions, everything. So it plays like a huge part. One common misconception of diabetes is the differences between type 1 and type 2. These nursing students are learning the proper care of both types and how to treat low and high blood sugars using high-tech simulators. The laboratory contains three high-fidelity mannequins where students can engage in a more interactive learning experience. It gives you like a real-life experience. Um, you don't realize how it is to interact with somebody with a certain problem, disease, until like you get in there and they, the teachers kind of make you realize what's going to happen in real life. One of the biggest differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes is that people living with type 1 must monitor their blood sugars by injecting insulin several times a day. Students are able to talk to the simulators as if they were actual patients and dose the proper amounts of insulin based on what they've learned. And your sugar is 320, that's pretty high. Oh my goodness, it's never been that high. The mannequins simulate a real-life patient's symptoms and conditions that nurses are likely to encounter in a real setting. You have to monitor what you eat, when you eat, what the medications you're taking. Uh, it's constantly up and down monitoring on a, on a daily basis, multiple times a day, um, things that most people take for granted or never even think of having to do. So it's very difficult for some patients. Samantha Galvez, News 13, Frackville. Still ahead on News 13 now. Did you enjoy our wintry surprise this morning? Well, cold temperatures stick around, but then we start to warm up a little bit. We'll tell you all about it in News 13 weather. But first. Federal programs are cutting the funding to food pantries. Will they meet the need in our area? That answer coming up. You're watching News 13 now. Local and loving it. We've been telling you how some people are trying to survive after a federal cut to their food stamps, and the government isn't stopping there. Also reducing the amount of money it gives to support food pantries. Matthew Petrillo stopped by one in our area to see if it could still meet the growing need. Susie Ducker started this food pantry in Ringtown because she saw there was a need for it a few years ago. It started in my mother's kitchen. <laughs> that was back in 2008 when they served just 20 families. Today, she says they give food to dozens more. Now, this food pantry feeds about 200 people here in the Ringtown area, and it's one of 18 others here in Schuylkill County feeding thousands of hungry people. Absolutely growing, and I'm afraid that it's probably going to be growing even more with the reduction in food stamps. An economic stimulus package from 2009 expired this November, cutting food stamps by more than 5%. 
That's not all that's being cut. The USDA provides some food for local pantries and has been decreasing the amount of food it gives. It fell from 11,000 cases in 2011 to about 2,000 cases this year. It's lowered the amount of food that we're able to give that comes specifically from uh, the USDA. Jason Shally works with Schuylkill Community Action. The nonprofit gets food from the USDA and then distributes it to food pantries in the area. He says the cut in food stamps, on top of the decrease in food donations from the USDA, is making feeding the hungry a challenge. We've had to go out after more private donations and make up for the shortfall. Oh, it hurt. Yes, it did hurt. Um, we just hope that we are going to be able to provide the level of service that we've provided in the past to everybody. Susie says they'll be able to meet the need this year, but she's not sure about the future. How much more we're going to need? Um, how many more families are we going to have to support? Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Ringtown. Time now for News 13 weather. In tonight's weather shot, we are local and not so much loving it along North Poplar Street in Hazleton. We're like most of us, this guy started his day by having to clean the snow and ice off of his car. Most of our region got its first taste of winter conditions today. It began as some rain during the overnight, then the temperatures dropped a little bit more, leaving an icy layer before things turned to all snow. Slick snowy roads slowed the morning commute for plenty of drivers. Folks who had to deal with it had mixed feelings about the slushy mess. For many, the snow is a reminder of the changing season, but some would rather the days stay bright and warm. I just came out this morning and it's pretty cold. I had to clean the car for the snow and I had to like I have to go to work soon. It was a little snowy and all covered in ice and not nice. Well, it's that time of year. It's kind of expected living in Hazleton my entire life. Uh, I'm fortunate. I'm feel fortunate that we didn't have snow in October this year. I don't like it. It's too soon. I like the summer. It's cold. I'm actually looking forward to the snow this year. Um, I don't know. I really like going snowboarding and stuff. So increased heating bills and uh, staying home with my wife and keeping warm when I have the opportunity. And News 13 also spoke with some pedestrians who would also like to remind homeowners, keep the sidewalk safe. Don't forget to shovel your walkways. walkways. Okay, so let's check the National Service Radar. Fortunately, all that stuff that gave Luzerne and Schuylkill all of northeastern Pennsylvania a slick commute this morning is pretty much out of here. And we might even have a warm-up on the way in the next couple of days. Here's the News 13 weather from the National Weather Service. First for Radar Hazleton. For tonight, it'll be partly cloudy with a low... Oh, cold down to 20 degrees. Then for Wednesday, sunny with a high up to 35. Clear and cold again at night with a low down to 23. For Thursday, sunny but a high near 44. Overnight low around 29. Then Friday, partly sunny with a high near 48. Mostly cloudy at night with a low around 31. For Saturday, partly sunny with a high up to a balmy 47 degrees. And now heading to Schuylkill County for tonight, partly cloudy, low down to 22. Then for Wednesday, mostly sunny, high up to 36 degrees. Clear and cold again at night with a low around 23. For Thursday, sunny with a high near 46. The overnight low around 29. Then for Friday, mostly sunny with a high getting all the way to 50 big degrees. Then mostly cloudy at night with a low around 34. For Saturday, partly sunny with a high near 52 and chance of rain at night with a low around 39 degrees. And let's check the winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you play the daily. Three, two, five, big four, five, eight, one, three. Quinto, eight, one, six, zero, four. The treasure hunt, three, 13, 17, 22, 28. Hope you won. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, St. Patrick's Church in Whitehaven will be holding a craft show featuring over 50 crafters and vendors. The show is Saturday, November 16th, and Sunday, November 17th. Admission is free. Call for more information, 570-406-9954. And finally, the Beaver Meadows Volunteer Fire Company will be holding an autumn tricky tray event this Saturday, November 16th. Doors open at 11 a.m., and the drawing starts at 7 p.m. They will also have homemade food, bake sale, 50-50 raffle, and much more. Well, more info about this event, please call 570-233-5199. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Michael S. Petrilla of Hazleton, funeral is Thursday at 9 a.m. from the Firo Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 6 to 9 p.m. Michael A. Nad of Hazleton, private services were held under the direction of the Firo Funeral Home. 
Helen Swatsky of Frackville. Arrangements will be announced by the Nice Heart Funeral Home. Mary Ellis of Frackville. Mass is Thursday at 11 a.m. from the Blessed Trees of Calcutta Church. Friends may call Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. and Thursday from 10 to 11 a.m. The David D. Jarrett Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Dorothy Richards, formerly of Hazleton. Arrangements were by the Lewandowski Funeral Home in Bluefield, New Jersey. And Leona M. Kolonsky of Shenandoah. The Lukovitz Orvitzfell Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. This is News 13 Sports. Well, you just heard that nice weather forecast, so what better way to spend the night than indoors? And if you're a Marion Phillies fan in volleyball, that's exactly where you're going to be tonight because we've got the semifinals for the state championship, and Dr. John Falabell's club is right in the center of it. Take a look. They're going to be taking on Bishop Guilfoyle. Bishop Guilfoyle is a uh, school outside of Altoona, Pennsylvania, and they're meeting at Cumberland Valley High School, a little bit south of Harrisburg, and they're getting ready to get that underway. Top of the hour, that is the semifinals. Now, in the other half of it, you got two teams out in the western part, but our focus is on the Marion Phillies, and hopefully they can do it tonight and advance to Saturday's state championship. Now, on the girls' double-A level, you got a District 3 and 12 team, Lancaster Catholic and Delone Catholic. They're meeting down in New Holland and Fort LaBeouf in Canaan area. Meadville High School, two western teams, they are in the other half of the bracket. Now, it's not going to be as toasty outdoors tonight, particularly down at Emmaus High School, but not one, but two Wyoming Valley Conference teams. Front and center, Wyoming Sem taking on Gwen and Mercy. Coach uh, Karen Kloster's team has been the underdog, but uh, they battled through and they made it to the semifinals. Now, that game is the nightcap. The early game has already gotten underway. They're scoreless, and it's Crestwood and Ole Valley. Crestwood, the defending state champs, they're the District 2 champs, and as I said the other day, wouldn't it be wonderful if you had Wyoming Sem and Crestwood in an all-District 2 state championship? Wouldn't get much better than that. Now, there's no team from the Wyoming Valley Conference in the AAA, but Westchester Anderson and Emmaus, and you're going to have Penn Manor Lower Dolphin, and uh, it was Penn Manor that knocked out the Coughlin Crusaders the other night, so we will see. Now, we take a look at the uh, NFL. Last night, if you're a Tampa Bay fan, you got to be happy. Finally, they win their first game. They beat Miami, a little come-from-behind deal. So uh, one win on the board for the Buccaneers. National Hockey League tonight, Islanders and Rangers are at home. And Philadelphia skating on the road north of the border up in Ottawa. Now, speaking of hockey, the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins they uh, have been off to a good start, kind of hit a little speed bump over the weekend. You're taking a look at some of the action from this past weekend up at the arena where they lost, well, two times by one goal each. However, they're still right in the thick of things and uh, the Pens looking pretty good. In the Eastern Division of the Eastern Conference, they are in second place. They're one point behind the Syracuse Crunch and they're uh, even with the Binghamton Senators. How about where they are over the Hershey Bears? Eight points. Better than Hershey, and boy, you got to like that because in the end, you get the feeling it's going to come down as it always does to the Pens and Hershey Bears. So the Bears uh, down in the bottom. Hard to believe the Pens will be back in action this weekend, but looking good right there. It's awful early in the season, but uh, all those people like ice and snow, go inside and watch hockey. Welcome to this week's super segment. Today we're here at Holy Family Academy with the principal, Mrs. Kozik. Now, Mrs. Kozik, there will be teachers from all over Pennsylvania coming here tonight for a presentation of some sort. And yes. why, why are they coming here tonight? Yes, we have teachers coming here, three teachers that form a team for Middle States, and they come and take a look at our school and evaluate our school under 12 standards. And the reception begins this evening when they can have a tour of the school and meet some of the faculty and staff. What is Middle States? States. It's Middle States Commission of Colleges and, and Schools, correct? Yes. The Middle States Commission of Colleges and Schools helps to build the integrity of the schools and educational process in the world, and they are celebrating 125 years of evaluating schools and educational systems. So this doesn't just happen in Pennsylvania or even just in northeastern Pennsylvania. It happens all over the world. Yes. So why is it important for Holy Family to have this team here at the school? It's very important for Holy Family Academy as 
there's one Holy Family Academy mm -hmm. school here in Hazleton for us to ensure that we have the highest quality of educational excellence that we can provide for our students here. So this week those teachers that are going to come here tonight will be in the classrooms checking up on the teachers, seeing that they're doing and teaching the the correct way in, in these standards. What are the standards that they'll be I guess judging you guys on. Yes, they will. The teachers that come here will be working very diligently, and believe me, I know they work really hard until mm -hmm. 11 or 12 at night. And they look at our school under 12 standard guidelines. And some of the standards are philosophy and mission, uh, safety and health. Um, they look at the educational programs, they look at the curriculum, they look at all the processes and organizational processes that we use here in school. They also they also uh, look at all of our documents and they evaluate us on the 12 standards and, and there are many more. And once you're accredited or re-accredited, what, what does that mean for the school? It's really a prestigious accreditation that represents our school is on a journey to educational excellence and that never ends so that we will always be striving to be the best. So if, if a, a child's mom or dad would like to come to, tonight, they're, they're allowed to, is that okay? Yes. Yes, right. they are. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you heard it from the principal herself. If you'd like to come tonight and you do have a child here, you're welcome to come to Holy Family Academy at what time does it start? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. For this week's super segment, I'm Christina Papa. We'll see you next week.